uh, a very good evening to everyone uh dr mari uh, are you there hey yeah, i am here okay great so uh, a very good evening to everyone today uh, we are back with our uh, class number 14 uh, on quality assurance uh, last week we had an excellent class uh, on brachytherapy and today is now uh, dr manistan to uh, teach us on quality assurance i think dr mani needs no introduction because we already know him he has already taken a few classes previously uh dr mani we are all waiting for another interesting session from you today yeah thanks thank you for the introduction i just have a little share the screen Yeah, good evening. Uh, okay, just you know, today uh, my topic is going to be on quality assurance. Uh, okay, as uh, you know, like uh, like you know, radiotherapy treatment process is a uh, chain process. So, like you know, every step is important. So, starting from uh, assessment of the patient, addition to treat, you know, prescribing the treatment protocols, immobilization, treatment delivery, up to the treatment follow up. so that the concept of quality system in radiotherapy is broader than you know restricted definition of technical maintenance and quality control of equipment and it's uh, very important to encompass a comprehensive approach to all the like you know chain in the treatment process uh, in the radiotherapy department so that starting from the moment our patient enters the department until the patient leaves because radiotherapy is not an you know it's not a one day procedure the patient comes in do does a ct simulation and we do the planning and you know patient takes you know like five to seven weeks of a treatment depends upon the site so that you know it's a long chain process we need to keep the quality of the treatment you know until the patient leaves so that you know it should be continue and you know it also required a follow up period so that you know we need to keep the quality assurance procedure until the patient's follow up it's not only just you know you treat the patient and then leave the patient so that you know the, before getting into the quality assurance just a little bit talk about the uncertainties in radiotherapy uh, the main uh, source of uncertainties in the radiotherapy or you know it starts with the different procedure like you know when you talk about the patient anatomy errors in the you know outlining of the patient uh, structures positioning of the patients you know you delineate the organ at risk and when you do the dose calculation estimating of tissue homogeneity you know there are a lot of other parameters which can create an errors in radiotherapy so that uh, defining a target volume is a major source of uncertainty and um, like treatment planning errors like you know when you don't do the modeling of the treatment planning system or if there is an problem in your beam model or there is a problem in your computer software or hardware everything can related to an errors in a radiotherapy so that uh, like you know the other answer is like you know what we are going to discuss about the treatment delivery errors so like you know we had an um, you know miscalibration of the machine and uh, patient was not set up properly and <clears throat> there are a lot of other parameters which can go wrong in during the radiotherapy process so that you know if you talk about this is a very uh, like you know uh, familiar curve for everyone the major source of uncertainty like you know when you talk about radiotherapy is the target delineation but if you see the other errors like if you talk about the dosimetries normally it comes within you know plus or minus 5% and the setup errors is slightly higher but if but due to this you know we have with this image guided radiotherapy all this imaging system really makes the uh, setup errors and using this 4d set 4d data set motion management system we are able to reduce most of the uh, errors which is inside like you know you can see this all this four yellow um, like cyan color in radiotherapy system but the main problem still persists in the radiotherapy is the target delineation still you know like you know every patient is different every patient is unique so that you know we really like you know there are, there are enough guidelines has come out still every patient is unique so that if you defining a target volume if there is a lot of uncertainty in defining a target volume you end up in a geographical mess and you know you have a recurrence in the patient and at the end of the day whatever the quality assurance steps you do like you know if you don't have a proper contouring you end up in the failure in the treatment so that uh, need for the quality assurance in radiotherapy 
just especially you know if you want to reduce uncertainties like you know you need to have a proper quality assurance procedures in your radiotherapy department and uh, uh, to inter comparison the results like you know uh, with your center in local within the country or internationally you need to have a more uniform and accurate dose metric system and delivery system that's why this quality assurance and you know this uh, acceptance and everything you know comes into the picture when because we need to treat uniformly okay i want to deliver a 50 grade to a cervix patient if i deliver in india or if i deliver in us it has to be 50 grade so that all this uh, you know quality assurance you know tolerance list came you know just to establish we treat everyone as same whether you know whatever the mission you have whatever the country you are treating we need to have an inter comparison results between like you know what you want to achieve and uh, like you obviously we want to do an error pro you know uh, system but still always you have an you know error in the radiotherapy process but you know if you have a good quality assurance program obviously we can reduce the accidental error and the human error what we you know do like you know what you happen to do in day to day procedure in radiotherapy and uh, for full and safe uh, exploitation of an improved technology and more complex treatments in modern radiotherapy you need to have a complete like you know error proof quality assurance procedure or program in your department okay like you know this is an um, like you know everyone is familiar about this curve is an uh, tcp and ntcp curve so that if you want to have an achieve and tumor control of something about you know 80 or 90 percent obviously like you know the normal tissue toxicity will be also there okay so that you know we are just estimating around 10 to 20 percent of the probability of normal tissue toxicity so that using this high end radiotherapy and high conformal radiotherapy we are able to separate out the tumor control and the normal tissue curve a little bit far away so that you know I can achieve a higher tumor control with a normal, less normal tissue toxicity. Uh, the important criteria, like you know, all over all the literatures, like you know, we talk about, we it's always told that dose delivery need to be within plus or minus five percent, so that your expected outcome will not vary much, and your normal tissue toxicity will also, like you know, you need to take care of you know normal tissue toxicity, so that if you're able to deliver a dose within plus or minus five percent, as we including all your setup uncertainties and dosimetric uncertainties, uh, like forget about your target delineation. I'm talking mainly about the setup errors and the planning system and the dosimetry system. If you're able to deliver within plus or minus 5%, you're really you are within the tolerance of your tumor control, whatever you would like to achieve. Okay, like, you know, we need to be a little bit uh, precise about the terminology, what we use in radiotherapy, especially like, you know, what is precision and accuracy? Okay, for an example, you're treating a patient, or like, you know, you're treating an, a highly conformal radiotherapy, like, you know, an IMRT or a VMAT in a department. And, so, like you know you don't have a proper imaging system in place uh, like um, there are a lot of situation it happens you do with highly conformal 3d uh, conformal radiotherapy and don't you don't have an imaging system yeah you can treat conformally but you are treating precisely but you are not treating very accurately so, and other case like you know most of the times you treat, like you know if you talk about a wide margin okay like you know uh, i like you know i'm treating a 12 patient i given an seven to eight millimeter of a margin for my PTV because I want to include all the uncertainties. Yeah, you're treating accurately, but you're not treating very precisely. So that, that's what, like, you know, we talk about a wide margin radiotherapy. The other one is like, you know, when you have, when your target delineation is good, like, you know, you have a very good setup, like uh, the setup uncertainties are within the limit and you have a very good, you know, technology strain, manpower, then you have a good imaging system in, uh, you have a good uh, like calibrated mission with everything is perfect then you know we can really treat a patient very precisely and accurately okay just you know i will go through some of the terminologies what we use in quality assurance uh, you know uh, the quality assurance needs a sound familiarity with some of the relevant terms such as quality assurance quality control uh, quality system quality standards and quality assurance in radiotherapy so that you know just we'll go just you know quickly all the you know uh, definitions and so that you know then we'll get into the all the qa procedures for the equipments okay so that quality assurance uh, definition is like a, it's a, it's a plan and systematic action necessary to provide adequate confidence that produce a service with satisfied given requirement for quality so that if you have a quality assurance program and you have an you know you you get a confidence about your system and uh, so that you know you confidently treat your patients and you know so that within the requirements so that qa is in a wide range and it covers a lot of the other things like you know it in all the procedures to be included all the activities including contouring you know your patient treatment planning uh, like your treatment like uh, everything has to be included all the activities has to be included in the quality assurance program and action levels 
also very important when to do action, when not to do action, so that the action levels has to be defined, clearly has to be defined. And because radiotherapy is an you know multidisciplinary approach, you know, you have a technologist, staff nurse, radiation oncologist, medical physicist, so that it's a, it's a team effort, so that you know the entire group of a team has to be included in the quality assurance program. So the management of a entire QA program is also called as a quality system management. So that you get into the next one, quality control definition. Quality control is normally a regulatory process through which an actual quality performance is measured. Like, you know, you are uh, getting a mission and um, like, you know, you, the, the mission is not as been in your country. Like, you know, you want to get in type approval. So normally the regulatory authority will come and just check, like, you know, how good is the mission? Like, you know, they used to call a type approval. So that, you know, most of the times the quality controls comes, most of the times it's in a regulatory process. And they will try to compare with an existing standards, whether the mission fits into the existing standards. And if it is not, then you take a necessary action with that. So the quality controls main, mainly is a part of a quality management system. And it uh, concerns all the operational techniques and activities. And so that, you know, you can check the quality requirements or met, like, you know, according to your criteria and to adjust or correct the performance of record so that if you, if you feel like, you know, I, I want to make my, you know, uh, rotation accuracy of my gantry should be within 0.3 millimeters because I want to perform an SRS SRT treatments so that you have to define it, okay, I want this machine to be within this spec so that it all comes under the quality control definitions. And the quality standards is a set of accepted criteria so that, you know, you need to make a criteria, okay, I'm going to do a 3D CRT, technique, like, you know, I want to follow with this mission only 3D CRT technique, or I want to go up to SRS technique so that, you know, you set up the criteria, what, what kind of an, you know, QA program you need to, so that, you know, if you go with an higher end technique, very precise technique, your tolerance levels are going to be reduced. Okay, so that uh, without uh, quality standards, uh, quality cannot be assessed, so that you need to keep an accepted criteria, what, uh, like, you know, what is your quality standard you recommend for. So that in the quality management system, you know, the quality control and quality assurance is an integral component and the responsibilities, procedures, process and resources, everything has to be included in the quality management system. And coming into the quality assurance in radiotherapy, uh, it's, it's all about the procedures that ensure consistency of a medical prescription and the safe fulfillment of what the radiotherapy related prescription. For an example, like you want to prescribe a 50 gray, like, you know, if I'm able to deliver a dose within plus or minus 2% to the tumor with all the uncertainties, it'll be really great. You know, we have a level of plus or minus 5%, but as like, you know, you are able to bring it down to two to 3%, like, you know, really you can expect what the tumor control you require and you can able to reduce the normal toxicity as much as, you know, as you deserve. So that, you know, you are the adequate patient monitoring and optimum end results is also an important, you know, component of your quality assurance and the minimal exposure of the person, like, you know, as a radiation therapy department always works with the, like, you know, radiation um, hazard, like always it's a component there. So that we need to keep a minimal exposure of all the radiation persons. So that that also has to be taken care of in the quality assurance program. As I told, you know, the radiotherapy team is, it's a multidisciplinary team effort. Like, you know, it's not a one, one man army. So that a lot of components like medical physics, radiation oncology, dosimetrists, you know, engineers, RTTs, staff nurse, you know, a lot of components are there. So that it has to, that we have to have a clear definition of, you know, what is the responsibility of a particular individual and for a different discipline, it has to be clearly defined. And each group has an important part, okay? If there's an, any weak link, you are going to end up in you know, compromise in your quality of the radiotherapy. And if you define a comprehensive QA program, you know, like if you, if you input, like if you, when, when a patient enters and a patient leaves the department, we have to make sure the entire policy equipment and the process control, everything we make sure, you know, like the good quality of treatment has been handled during with the quality system when you organize with all these aspects has to be included in this QA program. Okay, so that uh, comprehensive QA program, the policy and organization is, uh, is a comprehensive quality system in the radiotherapy in the management is should be supported by the department management. If there is an, you know, if there is no management support, it will be very difficult to have a comprehensive QA program in a department so that it always, you need an, you know, support from your management, uh, like, you know, for all, all for including all the aspects. We have a clear definitions of scope and quality standards to be met and uh, it should be regularly reviewed so that you know you don't lack you know in the process 
like you know you started the department with a good quality assurance program and if you don't have a regular follow up you will end up in you know losing all the quality assured program what you established in the beginning of the radiotherapy department uh the other thing is uh, knowledge and expertise if you talk about you know you record and you know uh, like expert expertise personal or a trained manpower it's very important to have a comprehensive qa program just i will uh, pass through a little bit like you know so that we can uh, uh, okay so that a comprehensive qa control program should uh, request uh, responsibility for quality assurance and quality system should be you know man the entire representative like you know need to be assigned properly and it has to be assigned to an in, uh, each and every individual and it has to be clearly defined so that and everything has to be document documentation is a very important process in radiotherapy and if there is an any <laughs> non conforming part and taking correction action it has to be properly reported and all the co uh, quality activities has to be recorded properly regular reviews of audit will really improve your quality of program quality control program if you talk about the uh, quality control program of an equipment many documents are available internally if you talk about uh, the I ipem report uh, number 54 like and uh, you have an uh, tg40 which is a top comprehensive quality assurance program for the radiotherapy and there are uh, ia tech doc also available there are a lot of other documents you talk about qa programs for equipment as well as for the radiotherapy department so let us get into the uh, qa procedures okay like normally we when we when we uh, talk about radiation oncology department we talk about the equipments like you know normally in excel in radiotherapy we talk about linear oscillators cobalt unit you know proton beams it's fine like you know it's a very high end equipments and bracketherapy units you know you have both iridium and cobalt so simulators the one important concept when like you know you guys all are you know young radiation oncology sometimes you going to lead a uh, department so that you know you have to give a very uh important uh you have to give a lot of stress on you know when you try to when you want to do an establish a department you have to give a lot of importance in the procurement and there should not be any compromise if you do any compromise if you do any error in the procurement it's going to be a systematic error for the entire department for the whole lo long process so that you need to be careful when you purchasing a department so that when you when you talk about the missions like you know you talk about the budget like always when you talk about and you know if you talk about a public centers like when you purchase an equipment always think about 10 years okay so that you know go and asking funding every time is going to be very difficult so that like if you talk uh, in a public center if you want to procure a linear oscillator you always think about how to run this machine for 10 years okay so that normally you know the linear oscillator life is around 10 to 15 years so that when you plan for a department when you work for for a procurement you always has to think about a mission to run for 10 years why i want to stress this is like you know uh, if if you have a limited budget you know always be careful okay you purchased a mission for 2 years and 2 years warranty and you don't have any amc contract or a cmc contract what will happen is at the end of the day after after one year of a two year when the warranty period is completed to in a public sector it's very difficult like you know as in india like to go and ask for like you know each time the part the repair and the competency every time the spare parts is very expensive so that always you think about something about 5 years of a warranty period and 5 years of a cmc contract completely fixed for 10 years it's very important because uh, if if you don't do it initially it is going to be very difficult to do this process when the mission is mission is you know uh, on treatment for like you know after 2 years if you want to start this process it's going to be very difficult if you talk about the simulators the conventional simulator concept has been more or less gone most of them so are going with the ct simulators because we started doing a 3d based planning for most of the centers so that a ct simulator component is very important when you want to establish a very quality assured radiotherapy center with a high conformal radiotherapy plan if you are going with 3d crt also a ct simulator with a treatment planning system um, with a good uh, linear oscillators is a very important component so that a qa program for an equipment it starts with uh, initial specifications like you know when the when you when you uh, open the lc the machine arrives so that we do an initial inspection of the machine so that we used to terminology as acceptance testing and commissioning and always you know try to prefer to give uh, enough time to the medical physicist to do the you know don't try to hurry up the process because you know if we don't do it properly there will be an, if if i do a b modeling 
in the treatment planning system wrong, it is going to be a systematic error for the entire course of the treatment. There are a lot of uh, incidents has been documented in the ICRP report about the accidental, uh, in, because of the you know wrong um, uh, like acceptance test done and the wrong data has been fed to the treatment planning system. And it is the, the, the price what we are going to pay is too much. So that, you know, give enough time for the medical physicist to do um, proper acceptance and to do the proper checks when we get a new mission. So that, uh, that that's the first component, which is an accepting and commissioning of the treatment mission. The second component is the quality control test. Before the equipment is put into the clinical use, try to do all the quality control tests as per the vendor, as per your competent authority. Like for in India, it is Automatic Energy Regulatory Board. You have to do all the tests and submit the report. And if you are not satisfactory, ask the vendors to do whatever the correction is required. An additional quality control test process then starts, okay, if some of the major component has been replaced, like, you know, if you want to replace an electron gun, which is going to change your entire beam profile so that you need to do an adequate uh, test to, you know, Put the clinic put the machine again in the clinic so that you need to whenever you are changing any major component be sure you have done the proper test before getting the treatment machine into the clinical practice and planned preventive maintenance is very important because all most of the treatment centers are run with a single machine and most of most of the linear oscillators allow the treatment machines or in the remote sites. We cannot just, you know, if the mission is down, we cannot call the engineers and just, you know, rectify it. So that the preventive maintenance play a very important role to keep the uptime of the mission. So that, you know, try to uh, go with the, like, you know, you do a uh, regular preventive maintenance to keep the uptime of the mission more and try to keep all the spare parts available, like whatever you're feeling, the spare part which is going down, like, you know, try to procure the spare parts and keep it ready so that you can reduce the downtime of the patient. Okay, just, uh, Okay, so that in a comprehensive QA program, the one more important thing is like, you know, when what kind of treatment technique you're going to uh, start with, okay, you're starting a department and you start with a 3D CRT and gradually go into the higher techniques is always advisable. Don't try to start jump into, you know, high end techniques, IMR, TV, man, and SRS in the initial phase. Always go with them, you know, uh, like, you know, start with the 3D CRT, get confidence, then gradually move on into IMRT and other techniques. Okay, so that, uh, and according to your technique levels, your tolerance of your all the quality assurance data or the, what you call as a tolerance, it's just going to be different. If you want to talk about a 3D CRT technique in a uh, department, like, you know, if my couch rotation accuracy is within plus or minus two AMM, I will accept it. When you are doing the same thing with an SRS and SBRT or other, like, you know, uh, high-end techniques, obviously your tolerance of each and other parameters for the QA test, which we are going to see in the, the further slides, which is need to be very tight. So that it had to be very clear what kind of a treatment technique you are going to do. And accordingly, you have to fix your tolerance for all the like, you know, QA parameters. It's not only in the treatment mission, it's all in the other process like AMU checks and other things. So that, you know, the treatment planning system uh, accuracy also has to be tested for different techniques and your KV imaging, ME imaging, I imaging accuracy uh, with the coincidence with your ME imager and the KV imager has to be tested, like, you know, according to your preferred techniques, what you're going to practice in your department. Okay, to when you start with a department, the first thing it comes with the radiation survey. Okay, before doing any test, the first thing you have to do it is when you get a mission, you start with a radiation survey so that uh, you do the radiation survey, why it is very important is like you do the radiation survey after finishing all your acceptance and you found there's a leakage, the medical physicist or what are the technologists who have worked, they have received enough dose so that we can, the radiation doses are like, you know, just firing a bullets, like, you know, I cannot take it back. So that radiation survey is one of the first and the priority thing, first when you start with the department, when you, when you start a mission commission, the first thing you do is the radiation survey. So that you survey the entire, uh, you know, area of your uh, uh, occupancy area and the non-occupancy area, and you do the survey and make sure it is within the acceptable limit, then you proceed for the acceptance test. So that radiation survey is the first thing when you do, like when you start with the, uh, like, you know, start with the acceptance of the mission clinically. So that when you do a radius survey, you need to have an enough uh, proper equipments. Like, you know, as the, I think we discussed in our previous classes, what are the equipments when you use for a cobalt and a linear oscillators? As cobalt uh, is a continuous radiation, we prefer a uh, GM counter-based survey meter. So that you are starting a department with a cobalt, you always prefer a GM counter-based uh, survey meter. 
but uh, the gm counters still it has a dead time so that it doesn't work for a linear oscillator so that when you're going for a linear oscillator the survey equipment has to be uh, ionization chamber based so that these things are very small and, and very minute things but it's it's more technical so that you need to be aware like you know which kind of a radiation survey equipment i'm going to buy for it for an uh, example if you buy an uh, ionization survey, survey meter you can use it for both cobalt as well as for the linear oscillators so that you need to be very sure what kind of an uh, equipment you have and what are the equipments is preferable for the, which kind of an equipment it's very important and other important thing is when you have an energy linear energy more than 10 mv uh, as you know like you know there is an um, like uh, <coughs> the interaction of radiation with matters you have a disintegration of an atom uh, so that you know there is a possibility of a neutron production once it's more than 10 mb so that neutron survey is a very important component neutron survey meters are normally it's very expensive normally uh, do not many centers in india have this most of the times the vendor brings this and do the survey for you but still you need to know like you know you when you have an energy more than 10 mb photons in any linear status you need to have a uh, neutron survey has to be done and has to be reported to the regulatory body <clears throat> then uh, the important thing about uh, procurement is uh, don't compromise on the quality of the equipment what you're going to buy because the dosimetry system is one thing you know not many of the radiation uh, like you know not many of the radiotherapy centers they give more important they give more importance for the treatment mission rather than the dosimetry system the dosimetry system is a very important piece of an equipment to keep your quality of the you know the radiation and you know the accuracy of the radiation what you deliver to the patient so that uh, you need to have this uh, very good equipment with a high accuracy uh, it's very important don't compromise uh, on the quality of this equipment so that when you start with the radiotherapy equipments like you have you you're planning for a 3d crt and you're not going for an imrt and vmat just assume in that case uh, you have an photon and electron so that you have to go with an electrometer with a 0.6cc chamber and a parallel pitch chamber for an electron so that these are the basic equipments when you want to start with a 3d crt you need to have these two chambers for absolute dosimetry and with a good quality electrometer and this is an another phantom uh, like um, like which is used for an absolute dosimetry see when you have a local phantom and we have an in, like you know which have a high accuracy phantom there are a lot of a difference sometimes we get a phantoms which is locally made for 10 or 15000 rupees but you know the amount of an like an you know, accuracy what you are going to miss is something about more than 1% because you know the most of the local phantom which we purchase for a low cost which are not very accurate because we are, the positioning of the chambers the alignment of these phantoms are very important when you talk about dosimetry so that don't compromise when you procure the dosimetry equipment try to buy the standard equipments with high quality there are other chambers uh, like you know when you try to go for uh, like you know high end techniques like imrt and vmat sometimes uh, not only the pharma type chamber and the parallel pitch chamber is not enough uh, we need to have a small chambers to take the profiles and configure the you know planning system if it's a 3d crt also we need to have at least 0.13 cc chamber uh, like uh, to pro to configure all the fields from at least from 4x4 or 3x3 field size you need a very small volume chamber which is around 0.13 cc when you are going for an SRS, SRT techniques, you need to have a miniature chamber like 0.01 cc. So that these things has to be given importance when you go for a procurement or you are setting up a new equipment, a new department. <clears throat> the other important thing most, most of the people miss is the temperature pressure correction. Whenever you do absolute dosimetry, I already discussed in my previous presentation also, it is a very important thing to keep the accuracy of your dosimetry system. Normally, if you do a dosimetry, like, you know, you have an error of something about three to four percent if you don't have a proper electrometer or a barometer so that give a proper importance and you need to buy a proper thermometer and a barometer to keep your absolute dosimetry like you know you don't buy any uh, like you know substandard equipments which has an error of two to three degree in temperature as normally a one or two degree can give a variation of two to three percent in absolute dosimetry so that you know try to uh, like whenever you procure it, because most of the time the procurement is a one-time process in most of the radiotherapy centers. We cannot go and ask the management again and again, you know, because all these equipments are very expensive. So that don't miss out each anything when you go for a first procurement. First procurement has to be complete as much as possible. Don't like, you know, once, because the 
like the the management like you know the hospital management whether it's a public or a private you know they invest a lot of money like it's about something about 3 to 4 million dollars and try to you know accommodate what are the necessary things inside your budget and try to procure in the first phase itself don't try to you know once you start the department like it's very difficult to go and you know justify the management i want this and i want this we are not procured this so that make sure make the specification what you require it's very important so that when you talk about the dosimetry equipments as i told like you know when you try to take a beam profiles when you go for a very small fields for srs and sre techniques we need to have a uh, proper chambers to uh, like you know to measure these small field measurements for an example if you talk about an uh, as i show you the cc 13 chamber or a 0.136 chamber if you see if you see uh, this is something about an 1 by 1 field or a 2 by 2 field this chambers are too big so that uh, sometimes if you want to configure a very small fields like 1 by 1 we need to have a small diodes need to be purchased <clears throat> so that this these are small small technical things we need to keep in your mind when you try to do the procurement in the initial stage other important things you know this is an uh, paper published in 2018 and uh, which talks about a small field dosimetry audit they did it in a lot of centers you can uh, most of the times you know the small field uh, data which is entered the treatment planning systems are not very accurate you can see the difference like you know in the 2 by 2 field the output factor calculated with the reference you can see the difference with some of the centers which has a difference of 15 percentage and one more important thing you need to understand like your treatment planning system is configured for something about 4 by like you started from 4 by 4 field don't ever try to treat a field as less than like 4 by 4 Okay, you configure for a four by four or a three by three. I have a, like a brain with patients of a one by one centimeter or one point five centimeter. Your treatment planning system will still calculate with a lot of uncertainties because the data are not inside the treatment planning system, and it will extrapolate and it will lead to a lot of errors. This is what happened in this diagram. I want to just emphasize on this plane. Most of the treatment planning system, this is the data which is taken all over the world. not only in uh, <coughs> developing countries like india it has a lot of data which has come from us and uk the none of the uh, centers which has a very accurate data for the fields is less than 2 by 2 and 1 by 1 you can see clearly which is going out which is more than 5 to 10% so that you need to be very careful about uh, doing a small field data commissioning in the treatment planning system you need to have an enough proper equipments <coughs> to configure the treatment planning system for the small fields especially the other important thing is the radiation field analyzer which is a very important component when you commission the treatment planning system so that uh, <coughs> which is almost mandatory for doing all this uh, uh, commissioning the treatment planning system and do all this uh, dosimetric uh, you know dosimetries and everything profiles so that it's a very important component when when you do the procurement of uh, treatment uh, your for equipments another important component is the plastic phantoms what you uh, need to do sometimes you know every time you cannot go the radiation field analyzer for the dosimetry for daily checks we always use a plastic phantoms for the morning check out so that you know this plastic phantoms are necessary for doing your daily quality assurance checks to check your consistency of x rays and electron beam <coughs> the other uh, thing is uh, like uh, this is an um, equipment which is uh, used to check your field sizes optical field sizes at different gantry angles which is this can be rotatable this uh, equipment is called uh, isocan like um, isochex like you know we can do the field size check you can see a small field size 5 by 5 10 by 10 15, 15 by 15 and 20 by 20 and it can be rotatable to 360 degree so that to initially to start with you know you need to check your optical fields are properly aligned so that what you do is you know just check with the zero degree angle rotate this check it at 90 degree angle so that there is no variation of the fields is with the rotation so that be, so that so that this uh, qa equipment will help us to find your optical field size versus gantry angle is accurately <coughs> matched or not normally the tolerance for the higher fields is should be within plus or minus 1 or 2 mm the other check is once you find check the optical field the next step is you have to check the radiation field is matching with your optical field so that we used to always call optical and radiation field coherence test so that <coughs> concurrence test so that you know what you do is you take a flame and just you mark the field edges or just you know you take a gaffer mic flame or a normal uh, <coughs> 
any any films like you know which can be graphic films are slightly expensive normally every film costs something around 2 to 3000 rupees uh, and if you, if you don't have that much of a budget you normally find an you know uh, extended dose rate films and you take a free field something for different field size just assume okay this is a 20 by 20 field size take the uh, film and just pin it on the edges of the optical field okay then you develop the field gaffromic frames automatically develops and you know normally other frames you need to take it to the dark room and develop it and you find what is the difference between your optical field is the this pinned area and the radiation field is then you know this gray area so that you can see like you know everything is within plus or minus 1 mm you are okay like you know for the higher fields we can go up to 2 mm so that's how you do an optical and radiation field concurrence test in the linear oscillators or whether it is a cobalt unit or a linear oscillators it's the same procedure <clears throat> so that uh, we like you know we can do like you know if you don't have a film in for a routine checks we did this uh, with an epit system like we put an markers on the optical field and we checked like you know with within 1 mm so that if you don't want to waste the film like you know for a routine quality assurance checks for a weekly and monthly annual checks you can use your electronic portal imaging device also to be checked for optical and radiation field Uh, because sometimes you know buying the consumables is very difficult so that you know most of the equipments led from with the linear oscillators or come with an epit so that we can use the epit system for optical and radiation field coherence test and other important thing you know always most of the times we go with uh, we always set the patient with an uh, optical uh, distance indicator or what we used to call odi so that this od has to be properly calibrated okay there are a lot of times you know if it's not properly calibrated you you set a patient on an ssd like you know if the oda is not calculated there will be an always an error so that oda has to be properly calibrated like you know i normally we can calibrate you can check you can put normally the slab phantoms which are 1 cm you can put it on the couch table and just just check like you know 100 99 98 you can calibrate the optical uh, distance indicator and you can cross check it it has to be within plus or minus 1 mm the again the normal routine checks what we do in the weekly uh, qa is uh, we check the gantry angles like you know we it, in the machine it shows okay zero degree whether it's exactly zero or not the split level is an uh, like you know it's an important instrument and we need to have a high accurate split level uh, we can put it on the a collimeter and see just you know we can use the split level if it is keep in between this so that you know we can check the collimeter gantry angle zero is exactly gantry zero and if you can move it on 90 you can use this uh, mm -hmm. uh, like you know split level uh, to check like you know whether it is at 90 and if you want to check it at 45 you can use the diagonal one to check the 45 degree angle the same thing can be procedure uh, can be used uh, you can uh, check the the digital value as well as your <coughs> always we go with the split level because split level is so accurate compared with your mechanical or digital readings you can do the same procedure for the collimeter angle also you rotate your gantry to 90 degree and keep this uh, split level on your collimeter and you can check uh, whether it's a 0 degree 45 degree or 90 degree and check and normally if you are talking about uh, the tolerance for this test is should be within plus or minus 0.3 degree and if you want to be very accurate you have an srs srt sbrt technique it has to be within plus or minus 0.1 degree celsius 0.1 degree the other uh, thing what normally we use is a uh, graph sheet is a very important piece of an equipment like you know uh, when we do an optical field checks like you know i i told you the previous uh, equipment if you don't have that you can use a graph sheet on the table keep an 100 ssd on the graph sheet and most of the times you know if you buy it local graph sheets you know i have we found you know in our experience sometimes the graph sheets also not very good the 1 cm is not 1 cm so that always you try to buy if you have a graph sheet always cross check with your scale like you know the 1 cm is 1 cm if the graph sheet is not uh, you know properly scaled or not properly printed this error is going to have a systematic error in your like when you try to calibrate uh, jaws according to the optical field uh, like you know you're going to end up with the error because of the error in the graph sheet so that you know you need to have a high quality graph sheet and it has to be cross check with your ruler always you know that's very important because in practical we have felt some of the graph sheets are not they have an error of inbuilt of uh, for 10 cm they have an inbuilt of something about plus or minus 2 mm <clears throat> the other uh, test is uh, the we should a spoke short test like you know we do to check you know how accurately the radiation and um, you know rotation um, and like you know <clears throat> is matched with the isocenter so the first one is the collimeter what we do is uh, 
we put an uh, flame on the couch like you know keep it at 160 put a build up cap and just to open your normally the minimum field opening in the linear slit is something about 0.5 min uh, 0.5 cm so that just open 0.5 cm just uh, show a uh, shoot a be or like you know something a monitor of something about 10 or 20 monitor units then rotate to 45 degree like in a different angle just you know you irradiate it um, and just take a spoke shot and just check the diameter should not be more than plus or minus 2 mm if it's for the 3d crt or if you are doing srs srt it has to be within plus or minus 0.5 mm so that the same procedures can be done for colimeter couch and mlc so that you can using this technique you can check your how accurate your radiation isocenters with the rotation of your collimeter couch and mlc and uh, this is uh, like you know how we do this uh, just you can irradiate the collimeter for a uh, small field size you irradiate the other one like uh, then you just you know, add all the images like this we did it with an epit like you know uh, we don't want to waste the film so that we did it with the epit and we cross check the diameter and this is a collimeter spoke shot for um, jaws and this is a collimeter spoke shot for the mlc so that you can see like you know it was very accurately matched it was within 0.1 mm so that this test can be done with you know in films as well as with your electronic portal imaging devices <clears throat> this is a comparison like you know we do with the film and then uh, epit like you know still it's a very comparable resolution so that you can use it a film or an electronic portal imaging device for this quality assurance checks on a routine basis this is a couch uh, rotation accuracy test like you know what we do is you take an image just you put three markers on the field edge you can see a small markers here okay and on take a couch 0 degree and just rotate the couch and take it at 45 degree and rotate it at 90 and you get all these markers and just try to match it and just see the diameter it should be within plus or minus uh less than 1 mm dia because when you go for a non coplanar fields the couch rotation has a higher inaccuracy in most of the linear oscillators so that this couch rotation accuracy for if you want to go for an srs srt treatments when you do a lot of non coplanar fields you have to make sure you keep the couch rotation accuracy within plus or minus like half a millimeter is very important to do perform and high quality srs srt srs treatments and uh, <sighs> the other thing is more important is like you know collimeter gantry and couch rotation accuracy see all this rotation axis gantry axis collimeter axis and couch axis everything has been rotation with a single point in the space which is called an isocenter so that all these tests are just we are doing to make sure all this gantry axis collimeter axis and couch axis or within like within the specification we can do this test to make sure these are within the tolerance according to your techniques what you prefer these are other uh, quality assurance checks uh, like you know what we do for a uh, multiple beam alignment test like if you are trying to do an a appa beam okay what we do is this misalignment test like you know which will help us like how accurately your jaws are aligned if if you have most of the linear oscillators have an asymmetric jaws what you can do is you put a flame and just irradiate like you using an asymmetric filter uh, asymmetric uh, jaws just irradiate on this part and you just irradiate just rotate your gantry to 180 degree and just irradiate the other part using the other part of the asymmetric field if there is no overlap or no mismatch your jaws are aligned properly for an example for a clinical case i will tell you like you know, most of the times we treat a head and neck patients or a breast patient with a single isocenter techniques um sometimes if you can see like you can feel there is a reaction in the junction of both the field supraclavian field and the breast tangential fields most of the times it happens because of your misalignment of your jaws so that these are uh, like you know so that you know if once you understand these things sir you can really correlate what went wrong okay so that these are the tests which will help us like you know whether you are asymmetric because most of the day we we always treat all the head and neck patients you want to treat a two parallel post uh, field and a lower anterior neck field always we use an asymmetric field to treat a patients if your jaws are not calibrated the in the junction we are going to treat something about lot of course but like something about you're going to give instead of a 50 gray you're going to deliver 100 gray on the junction and sometimes most of the times we have a critical structure like spinal cord on that so that if you don't ca properly calibrate your jaws you're going to end up you're giving a big hotspot in your organ entrance so that calibrating your jaws is 
very very important and you need to do it on a regular basis whenever you are changing a potentiometer in a jaw or you are doing a calibration always you try to do this test and make sure because always you do this asymmetric field techniques in your protein clinical use the other checks are like you know here we talk about a uh, mechanical isocenter checks what we do is for just i want to check like you know how accurately my polymeter is rotating just mechanically i want to check so that you put a front pointer and just put it on a graph sheet and rotate your polymeter and just check the the pin point is not moving more than half a millimeter or 1 millimeter so that you can note it down that is going to be a reference and that is going to be your baseline so that when you accept a machine like you know you accept the machine and you document these values okay i did a acceptance test i did a qa of a polymeter rotation when i accepted the machine it was 0.1 millimeters or 0.2 millimeter okay after one year okay just you do the test like you know when you do an annual qa and just cross check with your baseline value but it is within the 0.1 point millimeters or it has like you know the quality of your rotation accuracy has been declined so that you know this always whenever you do the when you accept the machine all this data has to be documented properly and has to be kept as a baseline the other test like here you can see is the gantry and the couch uh, rotation test like you know what you do is you can put the sharp needle on the couch and you have an the front pointer on this and you rotate your gantry okay so that you know this pin point should not this just always should touch each other and it should not move it should not go out of the way like you know so that you can check your uh, mechanical isocenter of your gantry and you rotate your couch also so that you can check both the things mechanical isocenter rotation accuracy of your gantry and couch has been pro like properly uh, calibrated and what is the tolerance is within the tolerance for our technique it is okay if it is not then ask your engineers to do the calibration again <clears throat> then let us get into the dosimetry checks uh, like you know normally when you start with the equipment normally we do the energy checks uh, uniformity checks penumbra like electron energy checks there we do lot of other checks when you assess the mission to start with the photon energy specification uh, there are specification by the competent authority we talk about 6 mb 6 mb in india and 6 mb in us has to be same so that we fix up uh, some of the criteria so that when you accept the mission you do a pdd and check okay for a 10 cm depth i did a pdd for a 6 mb beam i got 67% like so that you know the, the competent authority has kept a tolerance it can be 67% plus or minus uh, 0.2 to 0.3% it has to be 67.1 or 67.4 so that that's how we check your photon energy like you know you can check with the pdd or you can do with the tpr 2010 so that you can check when you assess the machine you have to check the yeah, 6 mv is within 6 mv it should not be 6.5 or 7 mv my pdd should not be more than 67.1% within plus or minus 1% so that these are the checks what you do when you assess the machine and we monitor this uh, keep as a baseline and we monitor this for the entire course of the life span of the tree machine the other important thing is uh, we always uh, do flatness and symmetry checks and because uh, uh, these are the data we used to feed into the treating planning system and uh, but during the course of the time when you start using the machine whether the machine is able to maintain the flatness and symmetry is very important and the machine has its own interlock when it the symmetry and the flatness goes more than 2% it shows the interlock and uh, before that i just i will try to explain what is a beam flatness and what is beam symmetry beam flatness is like you know normally we take okay if it's a 10 by 10 field okay don't go into the penumbral region normally we take 80 percentage of the field so that you know you take from the center mid, uh, central axis you take 4 cm this side and 4 cm this side what is the maximum dose minus minimum dose okay you can see the maximum dose here and this is a minimum dose here divided by maximum plus minimum into 100 which is going to give you your beam flatness the beam flatness has to be within plus or minus 2% uh, and most of the times for the larger field it has to be plus or minus 3% so that's how we define the beam flatness when you talk about the beam symmetry you check with the okay if it's a central axis you check with the right side with the left side okay both the sides are symmetric <clears throat> so that we can take a data point here and you take a data point here what is the difference so that the beam symmetry will define what is the maximum difference between the left and right area so that if i tell 2% okay like that the maximum difference between the two points on the left and right area is 2% so that flatness and symmetry is a very important parameters to check on routine basis so that what are the data like you fit it in the treatment planning system you are getting the same thing so that you take the treatment planning system data as a baseline and you do on a quarterly basis or on half yearly basis 
if you do a flatness and symmetry for a particular field is 10 by 10 20 20 and cross check with your baseline whether it is appropriate and if it is there is a difference more than one percent then you have to tune to your beam data or you have to do the entire beam model again Penumbral measurements is very important for the treatment planning system. Okay, just you know, I want to uh, uh, regress again. The penumbra is defined between the lateral distance between the 80 and 20% isodose lines. And normally at the 10 centimeter depth, you take a profile and the lateral distance, okay, this is the lateral distance between the 80% isodose line and 20%. The same uh, isodose uh, this and you know, to profile. So that the lateral distance between the profile of 80% and 20%, which is defined as a penumbra. Normally for a 6 MeV beam, uh, the penumbra will be something about 4 to 5 millimeters. When you talk about cobalt, it will be something about 8 to 9 millimeters. So that, uh, you know, normally the linear oscillators have a sharp penumbra because it has a very small target, whereas in cobalt, the source size is larger. As the source size diameter increases, your penumbra is going to increase. Accordingly, so that you know, if you know this penumbra, like you know, when you do try to do a margin in the treatment patient, so that your penumbra is more than one centimeter, don't try to keep your field edge, try to give an adequate margin for your penumbra. Otherwise, your treatment target is going to fall in the penumbral region. So that if you want to treat a pelvis patient, make sure in a cobalt treatment, you try to give an enough penumbra like margin on the treatment field. Okay, again, an important thing is a dose linearity. So that you know what I do is like we do is like you know we when you get a new machine we check the dose linearity and we document the dose linearity just given 100 monitor units note down the point in the uh, ionization chamber okay you get 10 nanocoulomb put 200 monitor units uh, like you know uh, you got uh, 20 nanocoulombs and uh, 300 monitor units you got 30 nanocoulomb and it should be straight okay this shows your dose is very linear in some case if you just take it back and if you see if you have a negative x intercept your the more radiation is delivered compared like you know your the, there is no dose linearity if it's a positive impact like you know x intercept like you know the less radiation is delivered so that you're using this test we can understand your system like you know the linear oscillator is giving a proper uh, it has a dose proper dose linearity or no <clears throat> so that most of the treatment planning system requires these are the data to be fielded in the treatment planning system and uh, so that you know the central axis PDD, output factors, tray factors, and the multi-leaf collimators, like, you know, the, uh, <coughs> like, um, interleaf transmission, interleaf transmission, central axis, the wedge factors, all these data has to be feeded to do the treatment planning system. <coughs> One more important thing is when you have a treatment machines with an, uh, you have, an, this is your treatment head, and always, uh, like, you know, when you have an IGRT component added, like this is a KV image and the KV major and the KV uh, source and then you know, KV major and you have an ME major. Now, when you start using this imaging system, okay, we need to know what is the tolerance of these images, okay? So that, you know, I need to know what is an, what, how much it is coincidence with my MV isocenter. Okay, so that for an example, what we do is we put a cube and uh, on the isocenter of the machine, and we just, we take an image and we have to make sure this is within plus or minus one millimeter. And if it is, you're treating with an SRS SRT technique, it has to be within 0 0.1 to 0 0.2 millimeters. And if you're having a mission, you are, you know, IGRT component, which is the accuracy of this image is within plus or minus two millimeters. It is very important as a radiation oncologist and a medical physicist to understand this. Okay, my accuracy of this KV image is plus or minus two millimeters. So that when I do a matching of a patient with a DRR with a uh, taken image, I get an error of a two millimeter, then you have to keep an action level. If my image, the, my, the difference is two millimeters, I will not apply any correction because my image resolution is two millimeters, okay? So that if anything more than two millimeters, then I will do the correction because if I have my error is on minus two millimeters, if I try to do a correction for two millimeters, sometimes if I go in the opposite direction, I will end up in minus four millimeters. So that this is why we need to keep a action level. So this is a typical example why you need to keep an action level in a radiotherapy setup. So that if I know my, my accuracy of my image is within plus or minus two millimeters, you have to tell your technologist, okay, anything less than two millimeters you are finding in the DRR and then take an image match don't try to do any correction you are going to overcorrect the patient so that you know that is your tolerance level 
so that this is an uh, test to check you know how accurately your kv image and mv image has been matched <coughs> normally when you talk about an 3d crt and imrt 3d crt it has to be within 1 mm is good enough like sometimes you know uh, <clears throat> there are the new machines which has a very good tolerance which is something about 0.5 mm but the old machines like if you talk about the trinac and the synergy models which has an the image accuracy is not that great probably with this within plus or minus 2 mm okay then we talk about some uh, image quality checks uh, like quickly so that just we are uh, <clears throat> Uh, when, you, when you accept a machine, like you know, we do an uh, high con image quality test. Image quality test is very important because when you do an, when you take an MV major, like you know, in the beginning you found the image quality was really good, and on the period of time, you know, it started deteriorating. Like you know, it may be a KV imaging or MV imaging, so that you need to do some test with the phantoms and keep a baseline data, so that you know this is a test tool called Leeds test tool, which can give a high contrast and a low contrast resolution. You can see you can see the line pass here, which talks about the resolution, so that with a particular mode, like you know, I do this test in the when you, when I accept the machine, I keep that as a baseline, and during the like you know my mission lifetime you know i do it on the basis if there is a change in the image quality do this test again and just see whether if there is a change in the image quality if it is then you ask the engineers to calibrate it again so that these are way like you know how you like you know keep this baseline data which is going to help you in further treating the selling the <coughs> patients okay this is another check which used to help the low point of resolution you can see the very slow small balls which has a different densities whether you can be able to appreciate that or not so that you can have a low density materials on your body, whether you're able to appreciate. So that this will help us to identify, okay, what level you can able to appreciate the low contrast test. And this is a grayscale linearity test. Uh, like, you know, we have a step edges with the different densities, whether you are able to appreciate the different shades. <clears throat> so that these are the image quality checks for the KV image, like, you know, 2D, 2D images, like for a KV imaging or an MV imaging, you can do this test. Other important thing, you know, most of the centers doesn't does is like, you know, the HU calibration is a very important component. Your treatment planning systems have this uh, electron density curve, which is fit against the Hounsfield unit. So that you, every CT, CT units have a different HU values, okay? Like I have an air, my CT number has to be with minus 1000. And if I have an uh, acrylic, it has to be 120. But <clears throat> this curve has to be configured with your electron density curve in your treatment planning system. If you don't do that, like uh, your heterogeneity correction in the treatment planning system is not going to be very accurate, especially when you are treating an uh, like, you know, heterogeneous medium in a lung and then bone, bo like, you know, bone and lung tissue interface, like, you know, you have a lot of uncertainties. So that this HU calibration <coughs> for all the CT units has to be done in the treatment planning system. <coughs> If you uh, like, you know, these are some procedures we, we do for a uh, CBCT uh, QHX. We use a cat fan phantom, like uh, you can do the density resolution. You can check the Hounds fields are correct in the uh, CBCT data. And the spatial linearity, like, you know, the phantom, which is exactly five centimeters, the distance between these two holes are five centimeters. So that I did a CBCT and just check whether it is five centimeters or not. If it is not five centimeters, then your reconstruction has some problem. So that these are the checks we do for spatial linearity. And image uniformity is another check. So you go and check the image uniformity on an image and just check the HUs are within plus or minus 20 HU so that the images are more uniform without any artifacts. And this is a high contrast resolution checks for uh, your uh, CBCT data or a CT data. You can do this. <coughs> so that in a comprehensive QA program, like, you know, if you have a uh, non-IMRT center, like, you know, 3D CRT, so that you have a different tolerance levels. Like, you know, for the laser accuracy, if I want to do an IMRT, it has to be within 1.5 millimeters. For an SRS SRT, it has to be within one millimeters. So that the tolerance levels, what you're going to set for a different techniques, it is going to be different, okay? So that, like, you know, for an example, your technologist is not well-trained, okay? So that you want to add a uh, component of the technologist so that, you know, what we do is normally the PTV recipes are made for different, like, you know, you have to be an institutional based. So that you do uh, 10 patients of a data, like uh, you create a, like, you know, just make sure how much error they're creating. And then you make your PTV recipe so that, you know, for your technologist, you made a recipe of a PTV margin. And for your centers, you made a recipe so that your PTV concept is it's more or less the same thing. Like, you know, when you, when you start with the different techniques, you need to have a different tolerance level. 
so that if you see like you know what are the checks you do, do on daily and weekly basis is the door interlocks your uh, emergency radiation button radiation area monitoring everything is functional so you need to check on a monthly basis you do is uh, x-ray output consistency on a phantom and it has to be within two percent uh, like uh, for IMRT and uh, SRS SBRT techniques. <clears throat> and uh, for IMRT techniques and SBRT techniques, not much of a difference, but uh, for an, uh, 3D CRT techniques, there are slight variations in uh, uh, for monthly and uh, quality assurance tolerance levels. When you do an annual QA, like a lot of, lot of the things need to be added and you have to be performed and documented it properly. <clears throat> So the, these are the checks uh, we do for KV and MV images checks on daily and monthly basis. Uh, like, you know, you do the collision checks and you just check with the KV and MV image matching and the KV and ISO center matching and the image quality checks what we have seen for the planar imaging and then um, 3D imaging like a CBCT. You can do a sp uh, spatial resolution scaling test. You can do it on as per the recommendation or you can make your own QA program for your center, which is feasible. Okay, the, again, the important thing is about uh, the uh, personal requirements. Like normally in India, we follow the Atomic Energy Regulatory Board. There are some other documents which has an international guidelines. <coughs> for the, for uh, as per the Atomic Energy document, uh, like uh, which is uh, the ERB, this document as per my reference, you need to have an, uh, one chief radiation oncologist in the center. And for every 400 uh, patients, like you know, treated annually, like um, no more than uh, 40 patients should be treated by a single physician per day. So that if any, any, any centers treating more than 40 patients per day by a physician, you need to have another radiation oncologist and one additional for every each 400 patients treated annually. And a medical physicist one per center for 500 patients treated annually and uh, additional ratio is for one per 500 patients treated annually. So that if you are treating more than 500 patients atomic, as per the atomic energy manpower requirement, you need to have more than 500 patients, you need to have more than one medical physicist and the radiation safety officer one percenter like you know so that if you have two medical physicists you have to make sure one of the medical physicists has a radiation safety officer certificate that has to be one radiation safety officer is necessary for to run the department and for the all the licensing procedures and the technologist uh, two per uh, teletherapy units uh, like up to treating 40 patients uh, on a daily basis and four per uh, teletherapy unit up to treating 80 patients daily <coughs> For a simulator, there are uh, recommendations for two for every 500 patients uh, simulated annually. And for bracket therapy is as per the needed, there is not of any you know, strict restrictions there. And if you have a mold room technologist, uh, one per 600 patients and a dosimetrist and as physics assistant, so normally it is not recommended here, but still, you know, if there are more than 500 patients you need and one more physics and physics assistants here. <coughs> Yeah, I'll okay, the one more important thing is in vivo dosimetry system. And uh, this is also like, you know, not many of the centers have this, but this is a very important equipment when you want to see <coughs> the intracavitary dose measurements on a frequent time. Sometimes you feel like, you know, you, you are having, a, you are started a department and you're having a lot of skin reactions. You don't understand why it is happening because of the treatment planning system is not properly configured or uh, you feel, you know, so that, you know, all this, this in vivo dosimetry systems will help us to identify what is the skin dose, uh, like, you know, most of the treatment planning systems are not very accurate in uh, estimating the skin dose. So that uh, we need to have an in vivo dosimetry system if you want to very particular about the skin dose measurements or intracavitary uh, dose measurements, like, you know, rectal probes, you can use it uh, in the rectum and just uh, check the measurements during the treatment. So that uh, in vivo dosimetry to check the uh, MU calculation independently if you want to do so that the in vivo dosimetry system can be used. And uh, if there is any error related to the setup of the patient's human error, which can also be found by the in vivo dosimetry system. And to determine the intracavitary dose uh, in uh, like readily, you want to do it like, you know, in the esophagus, vagina, bladder and rectum, the in vivo dosimetry system can be used. For remote after learning, uh, like, you know, normally we do the source positioning in the all the applicators and uh, safety portion of the source and the dose calibrations and the timer error. So this is an, a typical example of a bracket therapy source calibration point. Like you can see this, uh, <coughs> this an, uh, instrument we use to check the source position accuracy too. Like we have an, uh, we put a graphomic flame here and just, you know, we enable the uh, dwell points and the dwell time here. 
and just make sure you know we are exactly getting on that particular line if it is not getting on the particular line if there is a misalignment there then we have to ask the engineers to calibrate it again so that you know bracket therapy is very sensitive and one or two millimeters uh, slide like you know variation is going to create a, a big difference in your point a dose like if i have an like for an example like you know you have a protocol for a uh, 3d based bracket you are doing your reconstruction a uh, error is going to be half of your slice thickness okay you are doing a 3 mm slice thickness for your 3d based bracket like you are going to have a 1.5 mm error in your uh, source positioning okay reconstructing source positioning so that you know when you go for a bracket therapy make in your call like make your you know protocol like you know go as less the slice thickness as less as possible like go for a 1 mm slice thickness so that your error of the source reconstruction is somewhere around 0.5 mm is half of your slice thickness the other important uh, instrument we record for a bracket therapy is the source for the source calibration whenever we change the source or rotating checks uh, we do the bracket therapy source calibration using a well type chamber so that uh, this is how we check the sweet spot and do the uh, source um, calibration <clears throat> so that you know when you do the evaluation of a qa qc result expected results has to be checked like you know what you are expecting and just check your tolerance level so that you know i as i told you you have to keep your tolerance level so that okay up to here there is no action level otherwise if there is an action level for everything sometimes you will do an overcorrect as i explained you in the <laughs> like you know image correction in the setup setup images so that action required when the tolerance levels are exceeded don't try to interfere each and every time if your laser is just off by 1 mm don't try to go and change every day okay if it is within the tolerance leave it okay so that you are going to add more uncertainties in the patients so the action required must be based on systematic analysis and uncertainty involved on well defined tolerance and action levels so that the action level of the measurements should be within the tolerance limit and you need to be <coughs> very particular the other important thing is probably i will wind up within another 5 minutes uh, the treatment planning is okay just you talk about the uh, patient simulation okay we have an ct system and a treatment planning system and the treatment delivery so that all the system okay you try to use a flat couch you have a sac in the flat couch which is going to effect in your treatment planning system so that you know proper calibration of your couch in the ct system without any sac is very important and the patient coordinate system is a very important thing because the planning system have a different coordinate system your diagnostic tool is having a different coordinate system your treatment tool unit is having a different uh, coordinate system so that you know to use a proper coordinate system is very important when you establish a department okay try to see okay this is the coordinate system i am going to use it okay label it and print it and keep it everywhere when you do an isocentric check okay try to always okay keep your reference okay this is my x positive has to go left side negative has to go uh, right, uh, on the right side of the patient this has to be properly documented and each and every technologist who, the newcomers has to be because the coordinate system changes from centers to centers and there are different scale iec 612 iec 1612 there are different scales so that the planning like you know the rotation rotating 90 on your uh, like clockwise in the treatment planning system and but in the treatment machine it may be on the opposite direction so that you have to make sure all the coordinate system in the treatment planning system patient and uh, ct tps treatment machine everyone has the same coordinate system you have to ensure otherwise you will end up in a big error if you don't have a proper um, in, you know imaging device this is a typical example you know how systematically you can make an error when you set up a new reference point okay i put a reference point i define the origin but i need to move this point okay like something i have a tumor here okay i moved it if your center is don't have any imaging system okay you are blindly going with your couch accuracy okay your couch has an accuracy of plus or minus 2 mm you always have this uncertainty if you don't have an imaging system by moving this okay if you do have a manual error okay instead of right i move left you are going to treat in a wrong direction there going to be a geographical miss okay so that always make sure you move just write it okay whether it's a left side tumor right side tumor okay just always go with your couch vertical distance from the couch vertical just take a scale to your laser just my couch vertical is fixed always check the ssd if you don't have an imaging system most of the cobalt centers don't have an imaging system they just move the isocenter according to the treatment planning system always cross check all the parameters your ssds your right side or left side you move your isocenter properly everything has to be checked 
and other important you know uncertainties in uh, radiotherapy is you know organ motion okay this is for an example typically I, on the first day like you know my bladder is not filled you know the entire uterus is falling so that you give like you know you're doing a four field box technique like you know give adequate ptv margin for your internal fraction organ motion okay and again it's a typical example how you treat you know like you know we do imaging in our center every day i see a lateral shift of something about 1 to 1.5 cm on all the pelvis cases so that we do correction on daily basis for all the patients you can see like you know how much it moves uh, like you know on every day basis like uh, so that you know it's very important uh, to like you know if you want to do an high end treatment techniques it's very important to have an image guidance makes a very important role <coughs> So that all the organ motion has to be incorporated when you do your, uh, like you know, during your contouring, you make your ITV larger. If you don't have, like you know, your motion management system in your center, or sometimes you know, <clears throat> for a lung, you know, instead if you don't have a 40 CT, try to do a slow CT and try to do, incorporate the organ motion there. So, so that if you don't have an imaging system, don't try to do very conformal plans. You give adequate margin, otherwise you end up in a jaw fickle mess. <clears throat> for an example, <clears throat> typical example here is, okay, just I want to treat a uh, CSI patient, just, you know, I do a rotation of the collimeter, I want to match it. We simulated in our treatment planning system, <clears throat> there is a two millimeter of a gap here, mismatch in the longitudinal direction, we'll end up in a 30% cold, and at two millimeters of an overlap, we'll end up in 45% of a hot. If that's a spinal cord, <clears throat> you can assume, okay, 36 grade delivered to the, in the CSI plan, which is going to end up in 45% hot is something about 70 grade. So to good practice, verify all the data transfer, use critical approach, <clears throat> verify treatment, uh, like by comparing all the images and just do all the cross checks and possible. <clears throat> and it's, it's a two busy department, like, you know, why we do this errors, uh, like uh, uh, the WHO has reported most of the times it's, uh, most of the errors in the radiotherapies are human errors. In summary, like, you know, uh, we have an ARV provides the recommendations for all the equipments and staff needed and radiotherapy equipment must be tested and commissioned using all the protocols available. Each radiotherapy center's institution is expected to have a QA program to meet the national and international standards. And the QA program should be reviewed on a regular basis to incorporate recommendations onto new protocols to user experience and experience and other users. Thank you. Thanks for your kind attention. <clears throat> Thanks a lot, Dr. Mani. That was an, a pretty extensive and exhaustive uh, discussion on a very important topic, which I feel all radiation oncologists must be uh, aware of and uh, go through the, it because it's really useful uh, before they go ahead uh, and carry out their day-to-day uh, -day activities. Uh, again, this was a slightly difficult topic. So if the participants have not done their baseline reading, it will be difficult for them to uh, understand and we keep on uh, repeating this uh, before every uh, one of these classes that kindly do a baseline reading so that you can ask questions and get your doubts cleared. Uh, our chat box at this point in time is not showing any questions. Uh, so if you have any questions, please do uh, mention it in the chat box so that we can ask it uh, to Dr. Mani. Yes, there are a lot of uh, mentions about the excellent presentation. We all agree. It was very well explained. Uh, pretty vast topic. Okay, so one question is how to calculate PTV. Okay, uh, okay. So let's see, uh, like, you know, it's it's going to be another presentation how to do and PTV calculation. Yeah. Norm uh, normally, what we do is uh, like, you know, uh, like you take a head and neck patients. So normally, uh, what you do is like, you have an imaging system in place. It's really good. It's easy to do it. You take 10 patients data on an everyday basis or on, you know, weekly basis, two or three data. And try to find out your systematic error and the random error, and just apply the Vanas equation, calculate your systematic component and the random component, and just you can just using that recipe you can do a PTV. It has to be done for different sites and uh, like you know with a different immobilization system, you can calculate your PTV margins. I think uh, probably you know you can just find out in the internet you know how to how you can do it. Uh, 
yes completely agree uh, do you have any more questions uh, no okay. so thanks a lot dr mani it was an excellent discussion uh, and i think those who haven't uh, got hold of most of the of the gist of it you can uh, read it up and then uh you could go back to your uh, youtube uh video that will be available on the uh website so as well as in the ncg e learning portal so thanks a lot dr mani yeah thanks thanks to we'll, have have a good night uh, bye bye just a minute i think there is one more question so before we okay. finish it off uh the question is is there a okay. sequence is there any sequence of tests <clears throat> okay so uh, see the sequence of test is uh, like you know you have to make a protocol for your department for uh, for next start with an you know linear oscillators like you know for an acceptance test there are sequence okay because uh, before doing the okay if, before i am checking my collimator is not properly calibrated i should not go for the beam data okay so that all the check mechanical checks and your optical and radiation field test these should be checked and then you have to go with the beam data measurements so that you did the beam data measurements and you cannot go back again so that there's an obviously there's a sequence like when you go for uh, uh, like you know when you go for acceptance test and the same thing like you know when you have a sequence when you do a treatment planning like you know you did an immobilization you did a simulation you are doing a treatment planning you cannot go back so that you know always there is a sequence in a quality assurance program so that you know there should be an always a checkpoint at each and every point okay you did a simulation there should be a checkpoint okay the simulation is you are happy with the simulation okay if you are not happy do redo the simulation you come to the planning and you cannot tell okay my city simulation is not properly done okay so that always there is a sequence in the uh, radiation oncology quality assurance program obviously there is a sequence in each and every aspects i think uh, you have got your answer so thank you dr mani i uh, yeah. Uh, yeah thanks so th- and so we call it a day uh, so we'll meet next week next tuesday for our next class which would be on radiation protection so till then goodbye and good night yeah bye bye